Okay, uh, let me uh, officially present the next speaker. So it is Karapet Chan uh, from Imperial College, uh, and he will talk about color Poincaré algebra and uh, corresponding particles, please. Thank you, Dmitry, for the presentation. I would like to thank uh, the organizers for the invitation to speak in this on this occasion. It's a uh, uh, honor for me to be invited to the conference dedicated to Sakharov's centennial. Uh, I took the occasion to prepare for this talk and uh, learned a bit more about uh, Sakharov. So uh, it's uh, probably hard for me to say anything that is not known to this audience about this person. Uh, who invented the deadliest weapon ever tried on Earth, but at the same time was one of the biggest humanists of his time. So uh, I, I decided to say a couple of words anyway about the part of his humanitarian activity that is probably less known, at least to this audience, and has personal relation to myself. So I will first... Uh, so this is a... Sakharov statue in Yerevan, in the capital of Armenia, in a central square, also called Sakharov Square. And uh, this is a, a sign of gratitude of Armenian people for the firm stance of Sakharov in the peaceful and fair resolution of Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. You might have heard about this conflict. I don't want to talk much about the conflict itself, but uh, just uh, uh, want to show it as an example where Sakharov himself showed a sign of uh, intellectual courage and integrity, trying to promote what he thought was fair. And uh, <clears throat> for him, it was not just one conflict, but he wanted to uh, set a precedent where the rules are such that they don't violate human rights. And uh, I just show you a couple of quotes from his different uh, talks or uh, letters to different politicians. So <clears throat> he hoped that somehow the human rights should be much more important than other political interests. He was an op optimist, actually, and uh, his warnings were uh, very up-to-date even now. They are, and uh, unfortunately, people uh, uh, like Sakharov or uh, public intellectuals hardly get to contribute to uh, issues of public significance these days. And uh, the voice of reason and uh, uh, fair attitude to problems is uh, much less common nowadays. So I just wanted to also show that so this is a, a photo from Stepanakert last year in October when there was a full-scale war affecting lives of many people. And uh, in fact, it was hard for me to find a photo that uh, shows just human aspect of the conflict. And uh, this uh, somehow uh, showed how Armenians suck at propaganda. Uh, in any way, so I just wanted to mention this. And uh, it, it was, for me personally, very important at the time of the conflict to hear uh, not voices of politicians or media that are interest driven, but uh, public intellectuals. And uh, I, I got actually quite scared to see how few intellectuals spoke up uh, against the violence. And uh, among them, I remember now only the names of Noam Chomsky and Cornel West. Uh, in, in one of his letters, Sakharov was trying to cheer one of his friends, who was also persecuted by a Soviet regime, saying that fortunately, the future is unpredictable and also because of quantum effects uncertain. So we can hope that actually the future is brighter than what is the present. So I will move to, to my uh, talk on the science part. So the, the talk will be on colored Poincaré algebra in three dimensions and corresponding particles. 
it's a talk based on uh, recent work with uh, Joachim Gomez, uh, Axel Kleinschmidt, Amy Jung, uh, that appeared earlier this month. So I will uh, start from a motivation from my side, which uh, I caught on different occasions, giving talks on different subjects, but somehow I see that there's a uniting theme, and that's why I work mostly on problems that are related to the question posed on this slide. So the general problem for me is to uh, understand why is it hard to combine in a classical field theory. Uh, the four properties that are listed here, extended space-time symmetries, local action principle, unitarity, and the trivial bulk propagation. So there are examples of theories with any three of these properties. It, it's easy to find such examples, but it's not so easy to, I mean, it's we don't know any example uh, with all four properties, and this is an interesting question for me to understand why. Uh, so I list here some examples to show with three of the properties. Uh, one can come up with more, but these are just to, to proof of existence, basically. So uh, then I, I will also mention another motivation for this work, which comes from a different direction, which is to study particles in electromagnetic background. Uh, this uh, can be uh, done in a way uh, that uh, has uh, uh, some uh, advantages to to show more symmetries in the theory. And uh, so since uh, electromagnetic background violates some torrent uh, symmetry, for example, there is still a way to not only describe the particle in an electromagnetic background uh, that respects Lorentz symmetry, but uh, even more, one can uh, actually describe it using uh, Maxwell algebra. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, kind of description is more symmetric, and I believe more so uh, promising uh, for generalizations. And uh, uh, th this uh, was studied uh, quite recently by uh, two of our collaborators, uh, Joachim Gomez and Axel Kleischmidt, and uh, that is where our interests met, because uh, when trying to promote the, uh, generalize their work to Young's background, one uh, gets immediately a, a simple question whether one can color decorate the Maxwell algebra, and uh, this uh, would require to also have a colored version of Poincaré algebra, and uh, this is where some of our ideas met. So I, I will uh, describe just generally what I mean by colored Poincaré and generally colored isometry algebras in gravity theories. So if uh, if we have a, <clears throat> a theory of gravity that uh, has a certain isometry algebra, one can imagine adding a color factor to it in the same way as uh, one generalizes uh, Maxwell theory to Young Mills. Just uh, take the algebra, multiply it with the color factor, but uh, this turns out to be not so easy. And the reason is the following: so, you know, the gen if we imagine that our general element of the colored isometry would be uh, the generator of isometry multiplied with the generator of the uh, color, then uh, this product algebra in general is not a Lie algebra, and uh, this is easy to see by just one line computation. So uh, the reason is that in the commutator, get also anti-commutators for both color and isometry generators. And uh, if you start with the Lie algebra that uh, does not have an associative structure, then you cannot make sense of these anti-commutators. So um, <clears throat> this was the reason that uh, when trying to construct colored gravity theories that uh, was initiated by Wald, and I am aware that also Kyle Vasiliev uh, did uh, similar work, and, but he didn't publish it before Wald. So this uh, uh, turns out that if you start from Poincaré and try to add an associative uh, 
uh, I try to add a color factor to it, then the color algebra has to be commutative and associative. This is shown by Wald. And uh, later, uh, uh, Boulanger, Tamur, Gualtieri, and Heno tried to go even further with the work of Wald. And uh, they decided to uh, add the physical conditions and try to construct the corresponding colored gravity theory in arbitrary dimensions. So they add the condition that uh, color algebra has to be uh, has to have a po positive definite bilinear form. And uh, another property that comes from uh, field theory construction, one can construct cubic vertex of interaction with multiple spin two fields and see that the structure constant corresponding to this uh, vertex should be seen through. If you have these two conditions, then it turns out that uh, uh, the color algebra actually has to be a direct sum of one dimension algebras and the, the corresponding multiplicity turns out to be a sum of Einstein Hilbert actions with no cross interaction. Therefore, the coloring of gravity itself is trivial. The, the, the different gravitons live in parallel worlds that don't know about each other. So <clears throat> this is generally true, but uh, if we look again into this commutator structure, we can notice that if we had a, a isometry algebra that is associative, that uh, also would be able to define the anti-commutators here, then uh, actually in the color algebra, we wouldn't have the condition that it has to be commutative. Because if we don't make sense of this term, then we we want the, the whole term to be zero. So we, we want the commutators of the color algebra to be zero. The condition of commutativity comes from that. So we want to uh, relapse this condition. And it uh, turns out to be possible in case if we have an associative isometry algebra, which is, of course, not the case of Poincare algebra in arbitrary dimensions. But uh, there is an example, for example, uh, late 80s, uh, uh, the higher spin algebra uh, with color decoration was studied by Goldstein and Vasiliev. So uh, there are ESCO examples because higher spin algebra is actually an associative algebra. And, uh, and then uh, uh, some years back with my Korean collaborators, we also Build another example, which is uh, color gravity in three dimensional ADS space. So, there can actually also extend the ADS isometry to, to an associative algebra. So, the ADS3 isometry is uh, so 2, 2, which, which is a sum of two special linear uh, real algebras which can be actually extended to associative algebras by adding two central elements. And after that, we can actually color it, multiplying by a UN uh, color factor. And uh, this is a non-trivial coloring of this three algebra involving the central elements, which also get colored. So the because of the isometry between SL2R and U1,1, we can also write it in this form. And at the algebra level, the corresponding colored Poincare algebra, uh, colored ADS algebra would be UNN plus UNN. And uh, I can also construct the uh, colored gravity in three dimensions based on this algebra. And here, due to the fact that we have uh, still uh, some arbitrariness in the choice of bilinear form, uh, we can actually construct the chain Simons gravity using uh, such a bilinear form that the uh, overall action respects parity, or in other words, the, the singlet graviton part is uh, Einstein Hilbert. Of course, that's not the only choice, but that's uh, interesting. Uh, so, this is uh, the work we did uh, some years back, and uh, now one can try to see what what about the uh, uh, zero cosmological constant limit. So Poincare algebra. In this case, we would need to construct also the uh, generalization or extension of Poincare algebra that is associative. And for that, uh, here I describe the generators of Poincare and their commutators. So uh, the translations commute. So one can actually use a 
semi-group expansion method, or it can also work taking the this three algebra and you know, subtle you know, take the limits to Poincaré and uh, the corresponding uh, associative extension also works for the Poincaré. So the point is that we take uh, SL2 generators and uh, expand it with uh, a two, two generator semi-group defined by I and J with these conditions. And uh, the LA itself is uh, part of the this kind of Lorentz algebra in three dimensions. Then uh, correspondingly, we can see that uh, we are dealing with an uh, algebra where uh, which can be easily extended. So by extending this uh, LA is so basically one comma one to U one comma one, we can define their uh, product, not only commutator, and correspondingly, this leads to an associative extension of Poincaré algebra that contains uh, this uh, LA expanded by a semigroup and the identity expanded by the semigroup. So we have, uh, these two are the Poincaré generators and we have also two central elements. So this is a associative algebra and we can color it by colored algebra. And this we will call colored Poincaré. Uh, if we follow, Carefully, then uh, the color Poincaré in three dimensions is again uh, UN and and uh, sum with uh, a joint representation of the same UN, which commutes on the field for themselves, uh, but transform uh, covariantly under the UN, which I will call uh, colored Lorentz. So the colored Lorentz itself is uh, uh, the basically Lorentz generators matrix extended. This uh, I hat is uh, UN matrix uh, index. And uh, there is also a singlet term that is also UN extended. So we have uh, also uh, uh, extra color generators that uh, for singlets of the Lorentz. And the corresponding color translations have uh, the same structure, just uh, Instead of I, we have J here, therefore they commute. As we remember, J squared is zero. So um, we have basically uh, the analogs of the Lorentz pattern matrix extended, but we can also remember that UN matrix extension has a SUN part and the singlet part, and the singlet part itself will be uh, corresponding to uncolored one card. So we always have the the regular Poincaré sitting in the Poincaré, which is given by this M0 and 1 M2 in the Lorentz part. While these are without head, they carry the SUN indices. And then there is also the internal rotations that come with the central element and then the SUN. Generators. The, the central element here is uh, central for the whole U angle and algebra. So we can, in principle, drop it and deal with SUN. Rapet, excuse me, you have three minutes left uh, for the official part of your talk. Okay, I will try to be in mind. Yeah. Yes. So basically the same uh, commutation relations one can easily derive for the rest of the terms. And uh, and we can also define an action for color Poincaré, and uh, this will be given by Chen Simons. And again, we have a choice of a bi bilinear form. There's a one parameter family of possible bilinear forms, but there's a unique one which preserves parity, and we can choose that. And it will uh, reproduce uh, regular range that you get flat space plus uh, other massless spin two sector and also chance Simon's spin one sector. Actually, it's in this case, uh, uh, BF, but they are equivalent to something three dimensions. Uh, so uh, now we would like to construct, uh, so once we have an algebra, we can use the nonlinear realization to construct certain representations of it. And, uh, and uh, effectively, that's the uh, generalization of the Wigner method. And then we have the, we can choose the reference momentum that we would choose for massive uh, regular particle and uh, put all of the rest of the generators uh, to zero that come with color. 
and uh, try to see what is the stability group for for this uh, and the correspondingly uh, construct representations uh, that are induced from this. So the stability group in this case is you as you mentioned. Uh, we can actually so this is the reference momentum in certain coordinates and we can uh, actually use the uh, standard uh, linear realization acting with the boost and the momentum to see its uh, orbit and uh, we can see that it is uh, given by a certain matrix form and the covariant equation that it satisfies is uh, remarkably very similar to standard uh, uh, particle, uh, except that here it's a matrix equation. And uh, uh, and here we also can write a Lagrangian where we have a matrix Lagrange multiplier, which is a UN matrix. And uh, by except for that, it's very similar to regular particles. And uh, it turns out that this action describes actually not the only one orbit that we describe, but also a multiplet of orbits. Uh, n plus one actually, depending on n the color, uh, as you n, n. So uh, here it seems that, so that the, the orbits are parameterized by this L that goes from zero to n. And only in the case of n equal one, we have two orbits. This is a regular particle positive and energy, uh, positive and the negative energy uh, orbits somehow. And the case of uh, uh, colored particle, we have actually n plus one orbits, and uh, uh, there is a positive and negative uh, defined energy orbits, but there are also other orbits that are uh, that have no definite energy between and the uh, uh, definite sign of energy. Uh, so uh, the, the massless link can be also, in a sense, taken easily by sending m to zero, uh, the ADS uh, extension can be also extracted. This is again using uh, very non-trivial computations of nonlinear realization, but eventually the result seems quite compact. So there is a natural uh, idea to introduce uh, coordinates for uh, colored. Uh, it's natural to introduce uh, colored Markovsky space and uh, the point in this space would be parameterized by as many coordinates as there are uh, translation generators. So uh, then the action of color Poincare transformations in this space can be defined uh, in a simple way. And uh, on a specific coordinates, it will look like this. And the regular coordinates uh, that correspond to sigma. Uh, Lorentz uh, transformations and translations, and the term coming from uh, colored part, which uh, is suppressed by one over n. It's just to define uh, uh, in this Minkowski, colored Minkowski space uh, an invariant uh, metric and uh, invariant land, and correspondingly one can define a, a particle action. Corresponds to, that's a natural generalization of the geometric action. But in this case, the Hamiltonian corresponding Hamiltonian form would be a, a number, not a, a, not a matrix, which differs from what we constructed, in much more orbits than the one that we constructed. Uh, so uh, I will conclude. Uh, so uh, the uh, the outlook from this work is that uh, we would uh, be uh, constructing colored matter algebra, which actually we, uh, we did already, and uh, uh, we have the colored Maxwell algebra, but uh, uh, it would be interesting to. Uh, Study the particle dimensions. Uh, constructing changing uh, tasks would be a theory that uh, would satisfy the four properties I listed in the beginning of my talk. Uh, one can generalize the uh, particle actions here to extended objects, and uh, higher dimensions is also very challenging but interesting because so far we have only colored the 
Poincaré and Calvert. ADS only in three dimensions, while in higher dimensions, some cases this is possible, but the only known examples are color tire spin algebras of Constein and Vasilev so far. So I, I would like to thank by this and uh, be happy to hear questions and criticism. Okay, thank you, Karapet. Unfortunately, we don't have time uh, for questions and uh, move them to the discussion session. So thank you very much. There is one uh, hand uh, raised. Uh, yes. From Nicholas Bollinger. Bollinger. Okay. I, I'm sorry if I misspoke. Uh, no, no, no problem. Yeah, but I wonder if um, Karapet is still uh, can, can hear. Yeah, sure. And yes, Karapet is here, I think. Whether we can hear you. Karapet, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, so you, you remember after the paper with, uh, with Mark on arbitrary dimension, we have um, mm -hmm. a colored gravity theory in three space-time dimensions with um, non-trivial interaction. Yeah. So do you see if there are any relations between your work and, and this theory? The relation, no, uh, I, I think there is a relation at the level of field theory that you have constructed the, the interacting theory for uh, massless spin two. The difference is that uh, the uh, algebra that you're considering uh, has a completely different structure. Let's say the, the, the one that uh, we are talking about is the direct coloring of Poincaré algebra. While uh, in the structure that you have, there are, uh, for example, commutators of Lorentz transformations that give uh, Poincaré uh, uh, translations. So this is a completely different deformation of algebra. So in this <clears> sense, <throat> I think there's really orthogonal directions. Okay. But because... I, Mm -hmm. uh, the point is that we, we looked at all the possible interactions for massless spin 2 colored massless spin 2 in three-dimensional flat space time. So it's supposed to be an um, I mean, exhaustive classification. It's a cohomological problem. So um, how do you explain? Well, but there is one, yeah, there's one candidate here. Uh, just that the you cannot construct the theory that I was talking about without adding corresponding uh, Transimus fields. So if you just use massless spin two fields, then your classification is completely exhaustive. But if you add the transimus fields, then uh, this allows for the generalization that I was talking about. But of course, we didn't come to it from the field theory perspective. That would be hard to guess. But uh, constructing the algebra, then it allowed us to guess what would be the corresponding field theory. Okay, so in, you say that you change the spectrum, so you add spin one uh, fields yes. in, in the game. Okay, yes. uh, is, yes. is there a restriction where you kill those spin one field? Is there a kind of uh, consistent truncation of your uh, model? To... I, think, I think then it, I mean, if there is such a truncation, then it would actually change the algebra. Also on the Poincaré side, it would make it trivial because the one that we are considering is parity even. Uh, of course, there is one parameter family that also considers parity odd interactions. But if you restrict to the parity even sector and try to kill massless spin one fields, you kill all the interactions. Your interactions are parity odd. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in principle, if we extend our construction involving also generalizing to most general case with parity odd, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, still we wouldn't get exactly what you did because uh, in our case, the Lorentz generators commute to Lorentz to translations. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wouldn't get exactly what you get. It's but uh, uh, some of the vertices that you use can be involved in our construction because uh, if uh, we allow also parity odd. But uh, in general, the structure that we have with the chain symbols uh, that we're writing, there's, I mean, of course, one can try to relabel, rename in a sense that instead of uh, what you, you have is, um, uh, you call certain things as uh, 
Lorentz generators and the other is Poincaré translation generators. And that, that is natural uh, explained in terms of uh, the uh, spin two uh, uh, interpretation of the theory. And uh, one can try to somehow find the relabeling where one changes the one. Uh, so naively, my, my, in my opinion, what uh, would uh, bring us to yours would be some sort of uh, uh, non-relativistic limit where we somehow go to a limit where uh, the uh, generators of uh, Lorentz commute with each other. Generators of translation commute to Lorentz. So if we take the ADS, uh, colored ADS, then uh, take some weird relativistic limit, then we might get the same algebra, but with different interpretation. OK, thanks. Well, probably I will try to contact you another time because here I hardly understand and but for sure if you truncate to spin two the only thing you should get is our theory because it was exhaustive classification of spin two inter interactions in, in three dimensional space so that would be interesting but thanks we we should try to discuss later. yeah so the point is that we would we would get a trivial case you have something there but uh, we wouldn't see it unless we do something in trivial because if we just try take away massless spin fields, we get to the trivial interactions for massless spin tool. This is what mm -hmm. I'm saying, yeah. Okay, we have uh, uh, two more questions. Uh, maybe- and one question in, in the chat. Uh, one question, maybe the one, uh, yes. Uh, well, okay, let us, because in the chat there was, this question was for a while. So uh, I would suggest to Zhenya Ivanov and uh, Dima Panamaryov to postpone their questions to the discussion session. And then maybe I'll read the question in the chat, which is, uh, uh, well, if you are able to re respond quickly, because it, it, it looks very, um, uh, deep question. Hadronic resonances gives a good example of higher spin extended particles. Excitations of hadronic string model, uh, which are uh, excitations of hadronic string model. Have you any consequences from your, uh, your construction for hadronic space? Have you indication on confinement of color from your algebras? Uh, in, in the case of ADS, I, I, I'm not sure it will answer the question, but uh, uh, whatever comes close to the question, I will try to say. So in the ADS space, uh, there was this uh, interesting structure that uh, one can have uh, different vacua with different, different cosmological constants. And uh, it was uh, interesting to notice that uh, the vacua that uh, if we are in the center space table, and in this vacua the uh, is an extra massless spin too, were strongly coupled. So I, I don't know if this has to do with confinement, but uh, and also this is in 3D, so it's a bit hard to uh, talk about confinement. Also, I should mention that this uh, spin two and also spin one that we add the actual sinus they don't carry bulk propagating degrees of freedom. So it's uh, harder to t talk in terms of uh, particle theory uh, considerations. But uh, some interesting, intriguing structures that uh, you can see that these fields become strongly coupled was there. And uh, that uh, if one uh, actually generalizes to these two higher dimensions and this structure persists, then it would be related to confinement. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's thank again Karapet. <laughs>